Welcome. In this video, you are going to learn about the Graham Goods essay, Presentism, Postmodernism, comma, Poststructuralism, comma, Postcolonialism, prescribed for the MA English students of Calicut University. If you watch this video till the end, you will get a very good understanding from the examination point of view. Before we start, I want to thank you personally for being here with me and learning from me. And if you don't know me, my name is Pradeep Hariharan. And if you already know me, thank you very much for your support. So the class is divided into four parts. In the first part, we will discuss about who is Grahangud, what is the context which is very important for knowing this essay, and then what is the central argument of this essay. And then we will move on to the summary part. Summary part is we speak about, uh, it is conveniently divided for learning purpose. Uh, this is not done in the text. It's a single entity, but I have conveniently divided into three parts. In the part one, he sp speaks about what is presentism. Then he attacks four major theories, which is post-modernism, post-structuralism, post-colonialism, and new historism. And in the last part, he concludes. So this is what you are going to get. So who is Graham Good? We start with that very simple, just two lines only. He is uh, a Canadian theorist and teaches English uh, at the University of British Columbia and the essay Presentism is taken from the book which he published in 2001 titled as Humanism Betrayed Theory, Ideology and Culture in the Contemporary University. So that's the two point. And what is the context of this essay which is very important to know. Why should he write such an essay? See, we have studied literary theory and from 1960 onwards, when theory was emerging to a great force, there was a group of people who were against theory and they were writing about this theory. So especially in 1960s, something happened which is known as uh, the Picard Affair. See, this is not in your text. I'm t telling you because you can get an understanding of this. The Picard Affair is nothing. Uh, it, it is nothing. In 1963, Barthes wrote an essay on Racine, uh, a French uh, writer and uh, in which uh, he, uh, he wrote a way uh, which was very subjective. There was no objectivity in appreciating the work of Racine. So two years later, Ron Luck Picard wrote an essay which is titled as, very interesting, New Criticism and New Fraud, Fraud, in which he criticized Bartha saying that uh, he lacks objectivity. So he said, we must go back to the traditional practice of objective history and biography and uh, moreover, the theory, the problem with theory is that it totally rejects the liberal humanist project of accusing it of totally uh, imp uh, instrumental for ex uh, instrumental um, reason that is exploitation of nature, colonization of Europeans for the rest of the world, uh, patriarchy and class hegemony of the capitalist bourgeois. In other words, theory sees everything negative what liberal humanism taught us. And it only projects the negative aspects of liberal humanism. It does not uh, reflect the positive aspect. More importantly, the problem with theory is that it is itself problematic in many areas. So uh, this essay is a defense uh, to liberal humanism. Okay, that is a major point. It's a defense to liberal humanism. Actually, the aim of writing this essay is to give a new direction to cultural studies by bringing more progressive and balanced outlook. And uh, the problem, there are, when you study cultural studies, cultural studies always looks at culture as something dominated by the ideology. Whereas liberal humanism looks at culture as something to be achieved. So these are two contrasting views which are expressed in this essay. So now let's jump in to the summary part of this class. Great, I'm happy that you are taking notes. Now I'm going to share a study tip with you. Don't take notes any further. Just listen to this video once and after listening, just try to recollect all the points you have learned, then write it down. After that, rewatch it again and fill in those gaps. This is one of the most powerful method used by fast learners. And moreover, if you want an assistant professor aspirant, I have a Facebook community where I, where you can connect with me personally, which where I provide a UGC net mentoring, which I seriously recommend you join. Now, coming back to our essay, what is presentism? There are eight points you have to remember about presentism. If you want to write an essay, let me enlarge this for you. Actually, presentism, according to Graham Good, which rejects 
history. Why? Because according to the presentism, history cannot be known. Firstly, because we were never able to know the past as it is. So we have to make up a past. And moreover, past can be interpreted as the political interest for the present. And more importantly, presentism views culture as an ideology. It's a term coined by Michel Foucault. And presentism also rejects all the major developments of uh, liberal humanism. And uh, more importantly, it not only rejects the past, it also rejects the future. So he gives some example like uh, Lothar, he re rejects grand narratives, including Bible, the Whig view is human society is progressing and Marxist analysis of history. So all the progresses that have been made in the last 500 years has been rejected by modern theory in the last 40 years. If you do not able to understand some of these points, don't worry. As I d dig deep, you will be able to understand. Now he comes to the central part of this essay, where he attacks all the theories that we have worshipped and learnt. And what are his attacks? These are the three. Actually, uh, he says that uh, forgetting by the past, you will not able to understand anything properly. If you think you are trying to uh, uh, learn something, that is only a subjective view. In order to understand something objectively, you have to study history. And he says two prefixes dominates in theory. One is re, re-reading, rewriting, redoing everything. And the other one is post. That is post-modernism, post-colonialism, post-structuralism, you name what, post-feminism. So he calls them satirically POMO for post-modernism, POSTO for post-structuralism and POCO. And he calls them as uh, like characters in a Beckett play. So here he is sat satirically uh, criticizes uh, uh, this theory. And more importantly, he uses the same empirical tool used by theory to prove its point. So what are his objections against post-modernism? Seven points. Let's go one by one. First point he says is that uh, Postmodernism can only be defined against modernism. And what is modernism? In literature, it is a period from 1910 to 1970. And he says, when modernism was in vogue, there was no term known as modernism. It was called as post-impressionism, uh, post-imagism. The term modernism itself was coined in 1970s by postmodernism to separate them from the previous thing. And uh, what was modernism? Modernism was trying to break conventions from Victorianism. And what is postmodernism? It is also trying to break away conventions of modernism. So what he says is that uh, what we call as postmodernism, self-reflexivity, uh, challenging the past, that can everything be found in the first novel, Don Quixote. So presentism is uh, what you may call, it sees past as what you may call something uh, something conservative, whatever past, even modernism is conservative, and the present as something progressive. So this is one of, uh, these are criticism against postmodernism. And now he attacks post-structuralism, only three points he says, post-structuralism also suffers from the same problem. Actually he used the word, instead of past, theory used use the word post. Actually uh, it came as a uh, challenge to structuralism of Levi-Strauss. And he says when post-structuralism came, they gave more materials to literature process that they started creating more text than the original novels and poems. <laughs> we study literature to learn poems, novels and dramas. But with the emergence of theory, they produce more literature and uh, original literature, the creativity has been neglected to the corner. And his major attack two pages. He has totally dedicated for attacking post-colonialism and they are very interesting. What are they? The first point is that post-colonialism, they unconditionally accepted the terms of post-structuralism. And what you know, post-colonialism, it attacks Eurocentrism. At the same time, they use all the theorists of European theorists like Foucault, Barthes, Lacan and Derrida. They attack Eurocentrism, they use the theories. And uh, Another problem with post-colonialism is that they regroup the entire colonized countries as a single thing. He's, at the same time, all these countries are culturally uh, divergent and some of them are richer than Britain. He says like Australia and Canada, they were also called as post-colonial countries. And more importantly, take for example African literature. How do we study African literature? We only study English literature from Africa. He says if you were a true post-colonialist, you have to study English. Uh, French and Portuguese African literature together. 
so there is a segregation okay then he says that um, post colonialism it lacks historical depth it only focuses what happened in the 19th century it is silent on islamic russian japanese and chinese conquest moreover post colonialism puts all the blame on britain saying that it is because of britain that we are like this even rich colonized countries like australia and canada present themselves as members of the oppressed then uh, he says uh, the poverty of post colonial theory i like the word coin poverty can be seen in their core texts like the empire rights back the term was coined by salman rushdi it is co-authored by three academics living in australia okay the richest country <laughs> post colonial country and uh, even edward said's culture and imperialism he says it it has to be called as european Uh, culture and imperialism because it is silent on islamic russian japanese and chinese imperialism that is also happen in the world and another thing which he mocks saying that post colonialism even looks at literature in a negative light and the only two books they can quote is robinson crusoe where friday is colonized by Cru- uh, robinson crusoe and also uh, the tempest where caliban Uh, is uh, colonized by prospero so they taught th- these are the two old examples for them they cannot pick any other text and now he comes to new historicism actually he, he says that new historicism is an exception to this uh, uh, it's a collage way of reading text and non literary text of the same period but at the same time uh, the problem is that um, the greatest achievement of renaissance is realism and individualism which is attacked by new historicism and it gives more focus to history than the original text so in conclusion he says that uh, as part of cultural studies presentism has dispensed all the progress that we made in the last 500 years to twin disgraces of imperialism and patriarchy they were there those are the negative sides but what about the positive sides of last 500 years the human progress we have made and uh, how culture is viewed culture is always viewed as something dominated by ideology and you were controlled by the ideology but he says that culture is something to be reached it is not something is already in place it's a very negative view and uh, presentism denies historical agency even to groups even uh, they don't acknowledge marxism or any way of uh, historical uh, history they cannot see history as a continuous progress and uh, so what happens is that when you study theory for the last 40 or 50 years we seem to think that human beings are helpless powerless directionless and completely under ideological control but he says that we are not like that we are rational human creatures and we cannot be put under so he says we must give new direction to cultural studies by bringing more progressive and balanced outlook so this is the summary and of the essay presentism i hope this was useful to you if you have any doubts please uh, ask me in the comment and uh, don't forget to join my fb group for connecting with me i'll see you in another video until then thank you very much bye bye